Right. Thank you very much. Actually, I have a physics background. So I come from the natural sciences. I've gone through engineering sciences, and now I'm in the social science. Um, my talk is about sustainability, digitization, and planetary health, and how to avoid a dystopian future. We are all aware that the main problem of our world is lack of sustainability. I don't have to repeat that. And for this reason, also, we have those uh, sustainability development goals or Agenda 2030. And there is also perhaps a less known agenda, which is called the Planetary Health Agenda, which is also relevant uh, to the same subjects. The question is basically how to implement those agendas. And in fact, there has been some interest for example, of the World Economic Forum, they have created a global cybersecurity center and that collects a lot of data that can be used for all sorts of things. And there's also a collaboration agreement with the United Nations. And that is uh, towards implementation of the Agenda 2030 and also the Planetary Health Agenda. Um, it's about digital cooperation and many other goals that they want to pursue. Um, that sounds all very nice, but how to make use of this data if we wanted to? And um, a lot of talking has been about a surveillance-based data-driven AI controlled approach. So basically the idea of some people is let's collect as much data as possible about this world to get uh, as accurate as possible picture of everything, then feed that into a huge AI system that would learn the patterns and how to, to run the world. Ideally, it uh, would be super intelligent. So uh, basically figure out better solutions than humans could do. Uh, would perhaps uh, be able to figure out uh, the best possible evolution of uh, planet Earth, nature and humanity, and then implement this plan. But that would uh, interfere largely uh, with freedoms and human rights. And um, in, in fact, so, some of these implementations in the sense of um, a data-driven society has uh, been on the way and controversially discussed. We all know that uh, from the NSA revelations of Edward Snowden and the related scandals. And in fact, the idea to create a digital twin of the world is pretty old. Um, since many years, um, there's work on this by the US military and Fortune 500 companies. And one of those systems is called Sentient World. And this is actually collecting data, not only about the surface of planet Earth um, and also ecosystems, but um, about people, each individual person. And um, those digital twins of every person are really individualized with um, high, highly detailed um, surveillance data, as far as I know. Um, and then the question is, how useful would that be and how, how um, to basically make a contribution to a better world, hopefully. And some people have brought into the play of war room approach. So basically all the data would come together in a huge data center and their strategic decisions would be taken about the world and implemented. So the question comes up, would our civilization be replaced by a militarization? And I've addressed this in a, a couple of talks, um, in particular a TEDx talk recently. And I think we need to discuss this because uh, I believe there are a lot of issues over here. I get quite concerned when people say that uh, our world needs to be disrupted in order uh, to implement change and if people start to, to talk about um, that we have would have to learn to die in the Anthropocene and uh, then suddenly 
there's a lot of talking about ethical dilemmas and trolley problems and um, triage and uh, that is highly concerning because it's really about life and death of many people and i'd like to raise the question is it really a trolley problem or isn't it more a logistic and coordination problem also a problem of fairness and uh, therefore I have to point out that digital twins need ethics and quality standards. And probably altogether, we need a new approach. Um, in particular, we need to take complexity science on board. Uh, I've been involved in a paper that is in a preprint uh, stage um, about complexity science for digital twins. Um, we are pointing out over there that uh, digital twin approach that means a, a purely uh, surveillance and data driven approach is not enough um, and would be a too materialistic approach in a sense. Um, the usual digital twin approach tends to overemphasize the components and to oversimplify a complex system. And this can cause data driven governance and planning to fall short. Systemic failures could result. And in particular, the world is not a zero sum game. These are just a few words of warning. And I'd like to point out some of the interesting learnings that we've had in the area of complex systems. One of those areas is about, for example, managing traffic. Traffic is one of the contributors uh, to. CO2 and all sorts of other emissions uh, that one would like to reduce. It turns out that a new approach in which the traffic flow is controlled with traffic lights rather than the other way around, a self-organized control approach is actually superior to the classical approach of running um, a city from a control room. And uh, this is quite interesting and typical for many complex systems. There's also computational complexity in figuring out uh, potentially optimal solutions. So that can often not be done in real time. As you can see over here, <clears throat> all the traffic participants can benefit from this approach. So as newspapers have wrote, there's more green for all traffic participants and also more green in the sense of a better um, footprint on nature. So basically not only humans would benefit but nature as well from this new self-control approach. And that can be generalized to other complex systems, in particular our economy. And uh, therefore I'd like to introduce a concept that we've been working on for some time that we call finance for and uh, this is about participatory sustainability we all know that we need to turn wasteful supply chains into a circular economy where we reuse resources but the question is how and uh, all attempts of regulation, perhaps over-regulation, have not been extremely effective. But we can actually learn from nature, because nature has figured out uh, the problem. And nature is already a circular system, and so we can take a buyer-inspired approach. And there is a new way of combining synergy in cybernetics, uh, which doesn't lead to the um, control room based uh, cyber sin approach, but to synergetics, that means the science of self organization and symbiosis. And we can now build this using the Internet of Things, but in a participatory way. We've been working on this concept for some time. A few years back, we've called that the NervousNet project. And it has been proposed um, by the Future ICT project and its follow up uh, project Future ICT 2.0. And so the idea is to map 
noise, CO2, and other externalities of human activities and production and consumption um, and um, create feedbacks, multiple feedbacks. And uh, these feedbacks can be created by multiple currencies that could be connected to measurement procedures using the Internet of Things. Yeah, yes. may I just uh, say yes. that I'm looking at the watch again. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm is coming good. To, to an end shortly. So doing this would introduce new forces into our economy that would drive a co-evolutionary process towards a circular and sharing economy. And so the approach is basically uh, that of participatory resilience, where we reach progress by participatory innovation and by co-evolution. And this is very much in line with the idea and concept of digital democracy, where we would empower civil society by digital means and combine competition with cooperation, for example, in formats such as city Olympics that would uh, have different disciplines to improve um, climate, energy use, sustainability, and resilience, doing that based on a new model of globalization that we call localization, based on thinking global, but acting local and diverse, experimenting, learning from each other, and helping each other. And in fact, uh, we've run a little uh, climate city cup to illustrate the principles in the past we hope that would be scaled up globally to help us all to improve uh, our situation together so i'm finishing by saying i believe that that's in earth if we go forward this should uh, take a participatory democratic value sensitive approach and that is based also on a decentralized approach and informational self-determination and i would really make a big change and uh, help us uh, to solve the problems that humanity is faced with so let's do this together thank you thank you very much uh, dirk